Hi, I'm Liz Sneddon. Let's have a look at the answer to question 1b. So what we need to talk about here is what an interquartile range is. So we need to think about that interquartile range and we're talking about that in terms of a normal distribution. And we want to compare that to a standard deviation. Okay, so we've got a few things that we need to think about. And the first thing I'm going to do is refer you back to thinking about what an interquartile range is. So if I go back to my box plot, which you're possibly more familiar with, and think this point here is my lower quartile and this point here is my upper quartile. And I know below the lower quartile, the word quartile, quarters, means there's 25% of the data below it. The upper quartile means there's 25% above it. So if I now translate that into a normal distribution, oh, come back there, um, put our mean in the middle, our lower quartile is a point here where there is 25% of the data below it. And our upper quartile is a point here where there is 25% of the data above that point. So that's what we want to find, is we want to find these quartiles, and then we need to find the range, the interquartile range itself, which is our upper quartile minus our lower quartile. Okay, so that's what it's talking about with the interquartile range. And we want to be able to compare that with the standard deviation. So what I'm going to suggest is that we look at the normal, the standard normal distribution. And the reason that's a good one for us to refer to is that in our Z distribution, so our Z, standard normal, what we have is we've got our mean of zero and our standard deviation of one. So that is a known standard deviation. So if I could compare these Z values, so if I find Z1 and Z2 that are equivalent to my upper and lower standard quartiles, so that is 25%, the same as the lower quartile, and this area up the top there is 25%, the same as the upper quartile. So if I can compare that those Z values and that range with the standard deviation of 1, then I might be able to sh um, answer this question. So that's what I want to do, is I want to find those values for Z1 and Z2, where they are equivalent to the upper and lower quartile values. So let's go and get our calculator, and I'm going to do distribution normal, and I'm going to do my inverse normal mode F3, and I'm going to start with my left tail here, okay, so the tail on the left, the area below it is 25% or 0 0.25, standard deviation of 1, mean of 0, and that gives me a value, a z value there of negative 0 0.6745, okay, so negative 0 0.6745. So that is my Z1 value. Now let's go and find the Z2 value. So if I now change that to the right tail, F2, then that will give me positive 0 0.6745. Oh, go back. 0 0.6745. Now just as a little note, what I could have done, if I go back to here, I could have actually done this as a central um, distribution, so say the tail is a centre, and make the centre area 0 0.5, so the middle would be the 50%, and when I do that, I would get both of those values in one um, go, okay, so that's just an alternative way to get those same values. So going back to here, 
I need to now connect that back to the idea of my interquartile range being upper quartile lower minus lower quartile. So I want to find that interquartile range. And so I'm going to do my upper quartile, which is the Z2 value, so 0 0.6745. And I'm going to subtract the lower quartile, which is negative 0 0.6745. And when I do that, if I grab my calculator, so 0 0.6745 minus negative 0.6745 gives me 1.349. Okay, so I've found how many standard deviations the spread is for my interquartile range. So the interquartile range is equivalent to 1.349 standard deviations. And so now if I compare that to the actual standard deviation for the Z distribution of 1, I can now see that that is bigger. So I can see the interquartile range is more than the standard deviation which is 1, and that interquartile range is 1.349. Um, and so then that then meets the answer to the question. I have now shown that the interquartile range is always greater than the standard deviation, because this will be true of every standard deviation in any normal distribution. So if you were able to identify... Um, the graph in terms of this part here, talking about the 25% upper and lower quartiles, then that would have given you a U for achieved. If you're able to find that interquartile range here of 1.349, then that would give you the merit. And if you can then write me some kind of conclusion, then that would give you the excellence. Thanks for watching.